I considered myself to be a pretty good arborist and to be fairly skilled and knowledgeable. And, you know, it happened to me. It can happen to anyone at any given minute. On the morning of March 10th, 2009, we went to a property. It was a customer that we'd had for a long time, small crew, myself and two others. The job actually was pretty boring. We were felling whole trees and the grapple bucket would take them to the chipper. Chip truck would fill up quickly, we'd go dump it. I like to stay busy. I didn't like the, the standing around waiting for the chip truck to come back and I noticed up next to the client's house in the woodlot uh, a cluster of red maples, Acer rubrum. It was a multi-stem cluster and one of the stems, these were 16 to 18 inch stems, one of the stems went up at about a 65 degree angle and the top had broken off still attached to the main bowl and it was laying in the top of a hemlock tree. My game plan was to um, do a reverse Humboldt face cut and then use a bore cut to create the hinge and fell the tree. The rest of this all happens very quickly, probably f somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five seconds. When I tripped the trigger wood on the bore cut, um, almost immediately I started noticing small pieces of debris raining down. You know, some of it was hitting me on the helmet. I knew that at that point something was wrong. And this is a fairly large tree, 18 inch, and it, the end of it caught me right on the right shoulder, kind of glanced off my helmet and caught me on the right shoulder and basically drove me into a snowbank. And there I am in the snowbank with debris on me and uh, my right arm was kind of in a mangled position underneath me. When I got to the hospital, once we knew that my arm wasn't broken, we knew it was more serious. And there was so much swelling and damage that I had to wait several months before they could really do MRIs and CAT scans and find out what the problem was. And the damage is um, pretty severe and it's to a nerve complex called the brachial plexus. And that actually controls your, your arm. And I destroyed mine. And uh, my right arm was completely paralyzed, completely numb. Uh, my chest, my back, um, you know, were all paralyzed. I had my arm amputated. Um, for me, it was an easy decision, but for everyone else around me. It was a horrendous thing to have to go through. And I not only had to convince them that it was the right decision for me, I had to convince myself over and over and over. Because of the, the loss of the weight on this side of my body, you know, my spine is starting to curve a little bit. I have to do a lot of exercises to strengthen the other side of my body. You know, I'm starting to get compressed, uh, bulging discs in my neck bulging disc in my lower back. There's a lot of, you know, even hip problems um, because of the balance issue. So there are many, many, many after effects of that physically for me. And then each one of those takes an emotional effect on my family, on myself. Um, I did struggle with some pretty severe depression uh, for quite a long time. You know, as I'm going through all this, I lost, you know, my own business. There was definitely financial implications uh, for being on long-term disability. Uh, my wife had to go back to work and start her career again. Um, just all of these things accumulate and it takes a tremendous toll on the individual, on their family, their friends, their co-workers. You know, it's been, it's been almost a decade and uh, you know, we've talked a lot about it and there's always a coulda, shoulda, woulda series of things that go down. Um, I don't look at it as that accident happened because of what I did that day. I've taken a lot of time to really reflect on this and in looking back, you know, it probably started maybe a year before or, you know, definitely three months before in December because we started working longer hours, 
Um, I was actually going through a, quite a challenging time at, at home. We were trying to buy a house. My mind may not have been where it needed to be. And then in the process of doing all of this storm work, even with all of our safety training, you know, you start taking s small risks. You start experiencing near misses. And as these small near misses and risks accumulate over time, eventually you start building up the base of that accident pyramid. And it, you know, statistics show you follow up that pyramid if you're not breaking it at the near miss line. What we do is very dangerous and there are uh, a great many number of unknowns and if we don't shine the light on those and be willing to care for each other enough to share the messages and be serious about it, um, we're, you know, talking to an empty room. Um, it, it's definitely important that we take it seriously um, because what we do is dangerous. It's a great job, but it's very dangerous. I don't remember any of it. The, the entire month I was in a coma, I don't remember. Two weeks before the accident are a blur. And probably as I woke up and got off the medicine, probably a good week to two weeks after I woke up is still pretty sketchy. Hi, my name is Bill Hoddle. I work for United Power as a lineman. We were working in some underground uh, pad mounted gear and uh, I was not thinking about the task at hand, the job we were doing, and I reached in to tighten a bolt in a cabinet and it was energized. And I took 7200 volts here, my hand and wrist. I fell into it, took it 7200 at my, uh, the bridge of my nose and 7200 at my left forearm and I was on my knees so it all went on my knees. It was in a small industrial park and I took out two 65 amp fuses, two out of three so that's pretty uh, that's pretty intense just the fact that, that two 65 amp fuses went through me and went to ground. I was done, I was dead. They drug me away, did CPR on me, got me going. Uh, Flight for Life took me to uh, Burn Unit Hospital about 45 miles away and put me in a coma for a month while they worked on me. This, they had done skin graft before I came out of the coma. So this was healing. Um, this they had taken off within five days. It had gotten gangrene in it, so I had an infection in my body. My body, on I think the fifth day, hit 105 degrees so they knew that they had to take action. They had cut on my hand for five days too to see what they could save. And uh, they took it off and within 24 hours, I was down to 98 degrees and starting to heal. When I woke up and kind of got my bearings, somehow mentally I had already accepted that my right hand was gone and it wasn't a, a huge deal. It took my dad probably three or four, five days to to agree to show me what my face looked like. Um, he didn't want to show me right away. So, and it, and it took him a long time for him to, for it to sink in after him telling me what happened. So, I was just a blob. I, I hadn't moved in a month. I would lost 55 pounds of muscle mass. I had to learn how to walk again from a wheelchair to a walker to a cane to, to nothing and, and that, progress pretty quick, so that, that was nice. I definitely had my ups and downs for sure. Um, good days, bad days, but mostly good days. Whenever there was progress, is, it was good. I had some old foreman come and visit me when I was in the rehab floor, when I was remembering stuff, and and they, they helped me get through that. They're like, yeah, well, you have a job with us. You can be a street light for them and you can, you can do whatever you want to do. You, you know, so that pretty much set it in my mind that I was going to go back to work and do, do whatever I could do. I, I think safety is the biggest part of, of our job. We have a lot of PPE, we have a lot of safety procedures, you know, and, and there's no reason to not follow them. 
you're still going to work 10 hour days. Just take your time, slow down, um, do your tailgate briefings in the morning and, and follow through with them and wear your PPE. If I would have had my PPE on that day, I might not have had a big a flash, I might not have had a, a flash at all, a contact at all. Um, probably turned out better than it did but by far, but I know of people that have went through a lot, lot less and didn't make it. You know, so for some reason, I'm here to, I guess, tell my story and, and uh, make the best out of it. You know, at that point I had no idea if it was still energized or not, or if it had blown a fuse or something, but I figured better, you know, obviously be safe than sorry. Hi, I'm John Schofield. I'm the project manager for Western ECI based out of Eureka, California. I had came home from work that day and was just getting out of my work truck. And uh, the neighbors to the north of me had been uh, moving some dirt with a, ba with a uh, dump truck uh, over and over. They were building a road next door. I heard a noise and a cracking sound coming from the north of my property. And I look up and I saw that the power pole was actually uh, moving back and forth. And I saw that there was a dump truck that was kind of nuss nestled up against it. At that point, and I, since I saw that the pole was actually moving, I yelled over. Uh, the dump truck driver was probably about 200 feet to the north of me. I yelled over for him to, for him to stop. Um, he, he didn't stop. He kind of moved forward instead to try to get away from the pole. And the entire power pole, three phases of 12 kV line, um, came over right on top of uh, him and his dump truck. In this particular situation, there were three vehicles that were sitting in line waiting uh, for him to make that turn, um, one of them actually being a CHP California Highway Patrol police officer. And the wires came down on top of uh, all four vehicles. Um, the pole snapped in half on top of the dump truck. And then uh, when that happened, uh, basically it blew the transformer from that pole went on the ground. The transformer in front of my house blew. Luckily for me, I had still had my PPE on, I mean my work boots on, and uh, my PPE was just in my truck, which I hadn't even really gotten out of my truck yet. And so um, I just took a brief moment to um, assess the situation and, uh, and see how I could be of assistance in this. My first instinct was to yell over to tell all the, especially the dump truck driver, because he seemed to be the one in the most danger, to tell him to stay inside his vehicle. And then I proceeded to uh, assess the situation, look up and down the line of cars, and was able to uh, be able to communicate with them to stay inside their vehicles without really getting too close to the scene. At that point, I, uh, I went back to my residence to grab my phone to make a phone call to uh, the utility company explain the situation to them and let them know that there was an incident that occurred um, in front of my house. And I went into the street to make sure that no other oncoming traffic was going to um, get themselves involved in the situation. At that time, uh, I heard the fire trucks off in the distance, and so they came on site. Uh, I had explained the situation to them, what I knew of it, that I had called the utility company. They were on their way. The utility company arrived about probably 10 minutes later. Um, and at that time, he, uh, the gentleman was able to assess the scene and uh, make sure that the uh, grid was actually de-energized. Uh, he took his lift truck and actually lifted, uh, lifted three phases off of the top of the three vehicles that were involved. Uh, the dump truck still had a lot more to work. The wires were tangled up in the dump truck, so that was going to take longer. But he was able to at least to lift the wires off of the three vehicles involved, um, including the CHP officer. I think the reality really hit afterwards, you know, and it still to this day kind of hits because it's still, um, it's still just an awareness that I, you have, but you, you know, rarely in life are you going to be able to use that, those skill sets, to, you know, in a situation like that. And so I guess it's just kind of changed me a little bit um, in a sense where I'm, I'm more aware of the little things in the surroundings now. Safety in this industry is very, very crucial because the they're not small injuries when they happen. I mean, rarely do you get, uh, you know, a small cut, a laceration. You do get those things on a daily basis working around uh, power lines and things. And out, you know, in our setting, we work out in the forest a lot. And, and but, um, but the things that happen that can go wrong are usually pretty major things. It's usually life-changing things. 
um, I think so that's, that's really why the safety is so important.